some artichokes and squash that's not doing super well and basil and some uh, uh, broccoli and lots of carrots. Actually, let's pull a carrot. That's always a good thing to yeah, to it, get on to get on is film. Is this the concrete from the back area? These concrete um, slabs. Some of it is. We actually use the the. We have a lot of different like concrete beds that we've created. This concrete I got from a a city yard in Griffith Park through oh. through a friend. Nice. Uh, but let's look at. So there's a whole bunch of carrots right here, and let's uh, let's just uh, for the camera pull up a carrot and. Look, kind of a stubby one. It's a carrot called a thumbelina, and we could wash it off and uh, take a bite in a sec. There's a philosophy called permaculture, which talks about stacking functions. Like when you're in a city or in an ecosystem, um, everything serves multiple functions. And so this uh, this garden uh, clearly it's it's about food, it's about water, like I just said, but it's also social space. It's got a bench here. People sit on it. People can hang out in the neighborhood. Yeah. That contributes to security and to uh, social relationships and stuff like that. So we try to look at how to how to have multiple functions going on within one feature. You're reusing concrete over here for a purpose of, of, of saving or draining water to keep water retained. But we're walking on something that isn't concrete. Yeah. Normally, uh, walking around in Los Angeles, I mostly walk around on on concrete slabs, but we're walking around on something different. What yeah. is this? So this is actually um, permeable pavement. This is um, this is a project that we we worked with the city to get funding for. And um, when it rains, actually water soaks into this. It's it's sort of little rocks with surrounded with concrete, and they have little holes running through it. So when when water falls on it, the water soaks into the ground instead of running off. Do you know why this is not being done throughout Los Angeles as concrete sidewalks need to be replaced? Well, it's it's a little bit more expensive and it's a little bit less strong than concrete and the city's not as used to it. So one of the things when we worked with the city to get this project, um, we wanted them, this was actually the first time that the city of LA had used this material. So we wanted to get them to look at exactly that question of, how, is it really tough to work with? Does it work fine? How does it last over the years? In theory, it becomes as more stuff settles into it, it becomes less permeable over time. You know, so they're wondering if they come back in 10 years, will it just be like concrete and a waste of time or not? So the other thing that they did was in areas where people just walk on it, they used this. And then in areas where there's driveways, um, they used full on concrete because they, they were worried that if cars drive on this that it might break or might something. crack okay. might crack so, so this couldn't be used as a pavement replacement but it can be used as a sidewalk replacement well some places i you know there's some like stadiums back east and stuff that have this i mean it you you may not want to use it in a like a truck route right. but in a like a parking lot that you know you're going to get standard cars parking mm -hmm. in and not fire trucks yeah. um, it, it gets it used for work. that um, city of Santa Monica actually has a project where they have regular asphalt pavement down the middle of the street and then in the parking lane they have this stuff right, so right. so there's a few that's on Bicknell Street so okay. yeah so I mean it, it's it's sort of a new um, I mean it's probably been around for maybe 20 years or something but it's a little bit new and the city's still sort of experimenting with it and trying to see where it's most applicable and, and how it functions okay cool let's continue so, yeah so we've got lots of more trees here we've got um jujube and sapote a couple more plums and a cherimoya um, we've actually got a project here that's getting a little bit old and a little bit ragged but um, this is a bench that we made out of cob it's sort of a a local building material that you can do in, you know, anywhere in the world. You use a little bit of straw and a little bit of earth and a little bit of clay and then you can coat it with linseed oil and it'll it'll survive and then you can just repair it with more cob later. So it's a, a lizard bench. Um, it's pretty, we, we started building it, we thought it looked really big and then by the time we got it all built it's pretty, it's a little tight so it's sort of, I call it like the lover's bench, like it's, it's uh, people, people need to be intimate with each other okay. if they're going to use that bench. Okay, I see some agave over here. Yeah. <laughs> so let's walk up here and look at the, look at the garden and I've got a little bit of water on and I'll, we'll wash this off and take a bite of it. Okay, sure. So we've got kale 
and well, actually two types of kale, dinosaur kale and red Russian kale, and uh, tomato and some broccoli that's totally flowering, and <laughs> Brussels sprouts, and um, lots more artichokes. Artichokes are really, it's a perennial, so you only have to plant it once and it spreads, and it's a really nice plant. So it's just barely dripping. Let's go get, let's go wash this off. How does water usage compare here as compared to, let's say, a home in Los Angeles that has a full yard of grass, like we're walking on right now? <laughs> well, and we've gradually been taking away the edges of this grass. In fact, that whole garden that we just were at, um, that, that was all grass a couple years ago. Okay. Um, so in a couple of years, we're not going to have any more grass on Eco Village. Well... Hopefully. <laughs> That's a good question because we, we've actually been talking about that because this grass here, there's still some kids who live here and this ends up being sort of a kids play area. Okay. And so um, the plan is to keep um, nibbling around the edges of it and probably never take it out. Okay. Until those kids get older and leave. Yeah. Well, or then maybe they'll have kids of their own. Yeah, that's true. I'm just going to leave this on dribble in the garden because I need to I want to soak those tomatoes on a good hot day. Okay. So do you want to take a bite of the carrot? Yeah, let's let's do it. Okay. Once I put the, the hose down. We have nasturtium over here, and nasturtium flowers. Yeah. See? Yeah, so here's the carrot. How is it? It's a little tough, but... A little tough, but it works? good. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Wow, that's a tough carrot. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit late. It's like a month. I mean, carrots, you know, they send a bunch of energy down into the fruit. They kind of store it here. And then um, they it's a two-year plant. So they mm -hmm. store a bunch of energy, and then they flower the second year. Mm -hmm. And so the be the best time to catch them is when they've they've just finished storing that, and they haven't started to shut down. And this is like, started to shut down a little. I mean, it's a good carrot. I've been... I've been grading these and using them in uh, making like a banana, carrot, raisin bread. Mm. Uh, so. Do you have a sample of that? Uh, I'm not right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's all eaten up. So I'm going to put this in the compost. Oh, so you have compost bins right here. Okay. Right, yeah. in the, right in the garden area. Nice compost bin. Very it's nice. Little... How are the chores broken down at Eco Village? Uh, do, do you, does everyone have chores? Um, there is a there is a requirement, like a participation requirement. So you have to show up to certain meetings and certain dinners uh, minimum uh, each month, and for like four hours volunteer work a month. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a very it's sort of a minimum thing. Like most of us who actually participate do a lot more than the minimum. Like the gardens, different people tend them in different ways. Like there's a section that's that's my garden that I that I'm the one who tends, and uh, there's a section in the in the courtyard that uh, multiple folks work, and so they each water it on a different day. And I noticed there's a lot of uh, foliage out in this sort of common. Is this owned by the city? This area? Yeah. It's called a bulb out. So we worked with the city to fund this project, which which. Uh, theoretically makes the street more pedestrian friendly. This area you're seeing that's got mulch and uh, cardoon and rosemary and a little bit of yarrow and um, some mint that's looking like mint does in August. <laughs> Sometimes when I plant stuff here, um, people will steal it and actually cars have been hitting, when cars turn around the circle they've been hitting this. So I've been, I got some really big pieces of concrete which I want to uh, replace so, so at least <laughs> so it's if a, a car little, hits them it's a little more you know which car hit them. Yeah. yeah so um so this section this section right here was a parking space okay. was a street and so what we did was we worked with the city to remove a few parking spaces and to extend the sidewalk into the street and what that does is basically narrows the street and so um the the cars when a car sees a big wide street, they think, I'm on a freeway, I'm gonna go fast. And when a car sees a little narrow street, they sort of think like, oh, I, I'm in a room and I'm, you know, need to like be careful and be a little more intimate and yeah. stuff. So, so theoretically, this psychologically slows down the traffic. It also makes the crossing shorter for pedestrians. So sure. instead of that pedestrian having to go 40 feet from sidewalk to sidewalk, they go 30 feet. Yeah. So we've got uh, macadamia nut trees. Oh, nice. 
Um, there's actually a nice and old one that we planted right over there. On, on in that. someone else's yard. In someone else's so yard. So you're, you're claiming everyone else's yard now too as Eco Village, sort of, huh? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> when we had when the project started, it was a lot of kind of absentee landlords and. Uh, the woman Lois who got it started just uh, started planting and mulching and and composting and and uh, you know some of the landlords have taken some trees that we really liked out and some of the trees are doing really well. So we have another fig tree here. Yeah, more figs, more artichokes, more kale. We kind of use this uh, artwork to camouflage <laughs> what gets tagged sometimes. <laughs> Tangerine tree. There's actually a almond tree here. Almond tree. Nice. And okay, we're back to almost lobby. to where we started. We're back to the lobby. <laughs> I was told that you use only recycled or reused furniture. Is that correct? You know, yeah, it's a little bit mostly like hand-me-down furniture and hand stuff too. Furniture. I'd say that another eco thing. A couple eco things we have are a, we have a free table. So when when there's something that I don't want that that I think somebody else might want. Um, I'll leave it out on the free table. Actually, I like these shoes. Is, uh, are these taken? I'm gonna... Yeah, they're yours. And similarly, a uh, leave a book, take a book table, so. So Joe, what is this material that we're walking on? It feels a little bit softer than, uh, than hardwood floor. Yeah, I don't know a lot about it, but it's made of, of reused tires um, that have been, that aren't toxic anymore, that have been incorporated, you know, they've been reused to form this. We. We, we use, we rest, in some places we'll restore the wooden floor, some places we've used a kind of an eco-friendly carpet, and in the highest traffic areas we try to use some of these materials that take a little more punishment. Okay, and let's just take a walk upstairs. Okay. Well, here is the carpet you were talking about, and what is this exactly? It looks like squares of carpet. It's tile squares, and it's made out of some kind of recycled fibers, and it, you know, as one becomes damaged, you can replace a square without replacing the whole unit and actually a good idea let's take a look in here this is the common area we call it the community room and this is where we hold our meetings and make decisions and you can sort of see we you know write out all our announcements and agenda and uh, make decisions together we meet once a week each of the units has their own kitchen so we don't a lot some what are called co-housing spaces will have their own um, kitchen space, we'll have one large kitchen space that everybody will use. Mm -hmm. uh, we just, we, we use this one a little. We, we actually have potluck dinners and stuff in here, although in the summer we'll have them out in the street or out in the courtyard. Um, but, uh, so this, this doesn't get used that much. Let's just say I want to move in tomorrow. What would I have to go through? <laughs> what would I have to do? For tomorrow, if it's that quick, it would have to be what we call a short stay. So okay. it actually takes about six months for us to approve a new member okay. to move in. So if, if you want to move in tomorrow, we could, we could do it temporarily and, and not, you wouldn't really get like decision-making privileges at meetings, uh, but you could participate in stuff. But then we have sort of a, we have a process where we interview folks, we um, have them fill out a questionnaire, we do credit check, we, we have them come to events and meals and meetings and, and chair, and we, uh, we appoint a liaison who can answer their questions. We do welcoming meals with them where they can meet other folks, and then, uh, and then we accept them provisionally at six months, uh, at which point they can move in. So we want to make sure that we're compatible with them and they're compatible with us and there's no um, unrealistic expectations on either of our part, you know. And what so. is the cost to live here? It's, it's actually very cheap. So we're transitioning to, to a, a co-op where we would actually own our own units, but we're currently just a nonprofit owned buildings with, uh, which are landlords and so I'm a renter and we're about half the market price for this neighborhood. Wow. So. Uh, for, for a large single, it's about 500. For a one bedroom, it's about 700 a month. We're actually going over the bylaws for the, for the new organization and uh, kind of fig figuring out how it'll work. Mm -hmm. And uh, we formed what's called a land trust that'll own the land and be able to develop other eco-village projects. And then the, the co-op will just own the building. And so it becomes very cheap, very affordable. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Joe. Great tour. Thank you.